This news update is brought to you by. Whoa, I'm happy. No, I'm gonna take my time. I'm happy. Enjoying myself with lime. I'm happy. Escape from reality. Yay! And let lime take care of me. Whoa, whoa, we're just happy and smiling. Doing almost. Having fun and just living. Whoa, whoa, shopping, chilling, everything. Get happy with Barbados's largest and fastest 4G network. Activate any Lime prepaid or postpaid mobile plan today. This is the Barbados Today morning news update for Monday, October 13, 2014. Good morning, I'm Carol Williams. Enough is enough. Senior Government Minister Donville Innes says he will no longer support his administration's financing of the Cable campus of the University of the West Indies, at least for now. He says campus administration must first give an account of the exponential increase in tuition costs. Speaking at a meeting of his St. James South constituency branch last night, Innes gave the university a degree for managing its finances, and he said it's time that government forced UWE to explain its rising costs. I am not in support of giving one blind cent more to UWI until some questions are asked about the administration of that university. And it's not a Ministry of Education issue alone. Because we in this country believe that every time you ask questions about UWI, it's a matter only for Ronald Jones. When the government is forced to take money from taxpayers and put in UWI, and in a, an unsustainable project over there, it means that there's less money to go into health care. Innes also robbed the university for investing in projects such as the Nelson Mandela Freedom Park at a time when it's struggling financially. In the midst of all the challenges in this economy, good Lord have mercy, we can still build a Mandela Park. We ain't getting a blind cent from South Africa for that. And taxpayers must ask themselves who, what is costing where the money is coming from and who will pay to maintain it. Because when you build a park, I don't care how high for they look, when it does, somebody <coughs> got to cut the grass. Somebody has to maintain it. If not, it becomes a public health <coughs> nuisance. When you we goes, the principal or whoever, go and add a whole set of staff to the institution, people need to ask themselves where the money is coming from. The isolation unit that will deal with Ebola and other infectious diseases is expected to be handed over to the Ministry of Health by Wednesday. Officials close to the project tell Barbados today the four-room facility is almost complete, with work now concentrated on the inside of the building. Electrical wiring has already been installed. When Barbados today visited the facility yesterday, the outside was being painted. The unit, located on the grounds of the Enmo Health Center of the Queen Elizabeth Hospital, is expected to be in operation by the end of the month. However, its location in close proximity to two schools has angered parents and other residents. When asked about the matter, President of the Barbados National Council for Parent Teachers Association, Rhonda Blackman, said she is confident health authorities took that issue into consideration. I could assure that the Ministry of Health would have done a feasibility study, a feasibility study to ensure that when they put the facility in the environment that they're placing it, that it will not have any health impact or any significant dangers to the children, the school, or the persons living in close proximity to it. And I believe as a, as, as a medical team that they would know the dangers and the risks, the risk factors of such a facility. Fire officials are probing the cause of a weekend blaze that destroyed a house and damaged two others at South District St. George. The two-bedroom wood and one house that was gutted was owned by Donna and Shamar Fraser. A four-bedroom house was also damaged as well as a two-bedroom home. None of the homes, though, were insured. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, I'm Red Plastic Bike. Anyone who knows me knows I don't like coal.
sunshine rains in my country. I love it. Yes, it's on power. Now to sports, the third one-day international between India and West Indies scheduled for tomorrow has been cancelled due to a dangerous cyclone. The system has already battered some areas with winds of up to 205 kilometers per hour, killing six people across two states, causing widespread damage and forcing the evacuation of 350,000 residents. This means that the five-match series has been reduced to four games. The series is level 1-1 after India won the second ODI against West Indies in Delhi. To the region now, a major cleanup operation is continuing in Bermuda after tropical storm Faye battered the island with high winds and heavy rain early yesterday. The weather system left more than 27,000 people without electricity, while several roads in the British Overseas Territory were blocked with fallen trees and other debris. There were no immediate reports of any personal injuries, however residents were urged to stay at home. Fay was packing maximum sustained winds of 70 miles per hour with gusts of up to 82 miles per hour. On the international scene, the head of the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention has promised a full inquiry into how a hospital staff treating an Ebola victim in Texas became infected. CDC Chief Dr. Tom Fryden told a media conference a mistake was clearly made by hospital staff. He says 48 other people who may have also had contact are being observed. We don't know what occurred in the care of the index patient, the original patient in Dallas, but at some point there was a breach in protocol and that breach in protocol resulted in this infection. The individual was self-monitoring and immediately on developing symptoms as appropriate, she contacted the healthcare system and when she came in, she was promptly isolated. The level of her symptoms and indications from the test itself suggest that the level of virus that she had was low. And that's how we end our Barbados Today morning news update. You can join us again for the afternoon edition. In the meantime, log on to www.barbadostoday.bb, subscribe to our e-paper and email updates, or like us on Facebook. You can also catch us on Izumi Media in bus terminals or screenplay in supermarkets and gas stations near you. Also tune in to 101 on Lime TV to get the latest news and sports. I'm Carol Williams. Have a wonderful day. This news update is brought to you by...